initially when Mike Brown gets here, what's the leadership onus on both of you guys immediately and how did you guys respond to that? When they hired Mike, my wife had previously actually worked with Mike in Golden State. So like she was telling me about him and obviously we always hear stories about him and how strict he is, very discipline oriented, uh, accountability. And uh, I was excited because I just felt like I hadn't been a part of something like that since I got in the league. So it was, it was, it was exciting for me. Having that accountability and uh, calling guys out straight away on plays or even in the game, we've seen it, he's called timeouts with 30 seconds into the game, you know? <laughs> and uh, just having that, that pedigree of winning championships with different, uh, different franchises, uh, I was really excited about that and see what he sees, you know? There's a leadership council on the team. I know you guys are two of the guys on, on the leadership council. When you get the word on that, you have that responsibility because now the whole team knows that you guys are the designated leaders. How do you take that? Well, I've never been a part of anything like that, actually. Uh, but don't mind guys, guys are usually, guys are usually talking not. about, like, yeah. let's not have this practice or make yeah. sure this practice isn't yeah. too long. Uh, that's what a lot of it's about is um, just structuring practices and structuring uh, shoot-arounds and just, obviously, Mike wants to have it every day, and then we have guys that don't want to do it any days, so we're, like, we're, we're finding that compromise with the yeah. team. But it's been good. I think, it's, I think we've had a healthy balance. Yeah. and. Uh, and like Mike will say, while he's sitting in that meeting, is it's been working like this. Yeah, so, so if we change it and it stops working, he's like, we're going right back to this. Yeah, yeah, so it's our yeah. fault. So um, it's, I mean, it's, it's us taking accountability and, and what we're doing as a team. So your coach, Mike Brown, he's been advocating for both of you guys for all NBA, obviously all star as well. He's coached you know, LeBron and Steph Curry, and Kobe Bryant. How, how many stories does he give you guys about those guys that, that he's coached? He tells us little bits and pieces, yeah. but just how different they were personality wise but still had you know the same dog the same approach to the game while also being different and uh that's kind of what he wants us to do obviously he doesn't want us to act the way that they act because we're all different personally wise and we all grew up differently so we're all not going to do the same things but just being able to approach the game the same way that they did and and, and just do what makes what made them great so i'm going to take it back a year what was your initial reaction when you first got traded to sacramento it was crazy you know um taking my pregame nap, we're gonna play the Hawks, you know, and you get this call and you're like, wow. You know, and uh, all my friends, you know, coaching staff, you know, rela relationships I've made the, throughout, throughout my years in India, I came into my room, you know, we spent some time together before they they all uh, head off to the game, you know, the first, second bus. Oh, y'all on the road? Yeah, on the road and. Those are the worst. Yeah. And then, that's it, we got on a plane, you know, Justin and Jeremy and that's it, we were out. Darren, what's your initial reaction when you hear you, you, you guys are getting Domas, obviously an all-star caliber big man right there, 20 and 10 guy. What was your initial take? When it happened, and then they sent who it was, it's kind of like, wow, we're losing someone who is a really good player who's going to be a star in this league, but we're getting someone who's also already been an all-star. My initial reaction, too, was I never played with a big that, was, that could command so much attention and do the things that he does. So I was excited. We're both playing well. I think our situations have both gotten better. I think him getting a team obviously showed everybody what he can do. Me playing off of someone like Domas has made me a much better player and showed people what I can do. So, like I said, it's, I think it's a win for, for everybody. So, Domas, I got to ask you about your thumb. How are you doing it? How are you playing <laughs> through it? I think everyone in the league, when, you know, obviously the injury came out and then you ended up playing on it, I think it was just a matter of, like, okay, like when's the next shoe yeah. going to drop? It's been months now, mm -hmm. playing still at an elite level. Yeah. So, how are you doing it? Once it happened, you know, there was talk about surgery and non-surgery, and I was like, just give me a couple days. If the swelling goes down, I'm gonna try it one game. If I can, I can, but if I can, you know, and then uh, we had that game against Denver. It's painful, sometimes it comes, it goes, you know, it might, it might get hit or not, you know. Um, we, we, we like wrap it up so like it protects as much as we can, but um, it's definitely gotten better since those first couple weeks. You look at all NBA teams this year, you, your coach has advocated for both of you guys. I'll, I'll let you make the case for Domas, and I'll let Domas make the case for you. Why do you think Domas should be on the All-NBA oh, I think just without a doubt, he's been top three center in the league. Without a doubt. I mean, triple-double, he's leading the league in double-doubles. I don't think there have been guys at his position that are playing much better than him. I think he's up there with uh, Jokic and Joel Embiid. I mean, they're, they're playing obviously extremely well, but if Domas was out for us for 25 games, like, we're definitely not in the position that we're in. So. Um, I think that's, I mean, that's a huge part of why he should definitely make an All-NBA team. Uh, well, Mr. Clutch, <laughs> in the fourth quarter, um, you know, I always tell everyone, uh, we're not here where we are without him. There's been countless games, every game where he just takes over in the fourth. Either 
we can't manage to do a full game how we want, you know. And uh, in the fourth quarter, if the game's always tied, you know, um, he takes over, you know, six minutes left, eight minutes less, you know, he, he just does his thing, makes everyone better, you know. He, his confidence kind of rubs off on all of us and it gives it to us, you know. So uh, I just feel like he, at, the, at the end of those games, you know, um, we just all feel a lot more calm and like we're not worried. Like we, we're down four or something, we're like a minute and a half left, we're like, we still got this. Like we're going to get a stop, we're going to score for sure and then give the ball to him and he, he, he does the rest. So De'Aaron's been here six years, you've been here one calendar year. If you guys make the playoffs, you guys are snapping a 16-year drought. What do you think that'll mean for you guys and, and for you personally being able to be part of that, that team? I, I just want to do it for the city, for the city and the fans. Like, I'm scared what's going to happen, to be honest. So, <laughs> if it afraid. happens, you know. I haven't so. been to a game this year, but yeah. every, no matter who we're playing, like, it's, it's loud. This fan base shows up no matter who you're playing. The last TNT game, because I don't remember how it was when we played Brooklyn, but the last TNT game when we played New York, I think uh, it was great that the world got to see that.